in demand which is coming so yes it was it was a, such a insightful discussion um we are running late by almost 2 to 3 minutes so uh, we will go ahead with our panel discussion so uh, uh, the next discussion we are going to have is on the is on the topic of global investor status uh, the next session will be chaired by uh, mr ravi nandan sena who is the director of development uh, at msme business forum india and we are going to have a themed panel of investors from this particular sector so um, over to you ravi sir I hope I'm visible. Namaste, everybody. Good morning. Namaste. It's 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 my privilege to be here and moderating today for this wonderful session, which is being organized by the team Clear Meat, the Sustainable Meat Solutions. And uh, as rightly the the uh, tagline says, which is very very impactful, which is very very meaningful, which says. investing innovating and solving food challenges ladies and gentlemen it's a privilege me ravinandan sena director msme business forum india and believing in clear meats meats concept welcome you today to this very power packed discussion that we are going to have along with my fellow panelists and uh, let me tell you ladies and gentlemen the panelists who are here are all experts in their field it is a pleasure for me to introduce them to you and also would like each and every person in this in this uh, in this participating webinar to come forward and keep your questions packed because remember one thing these are the people who have come together for a purpose these are the people who have come together to, to talk about give your views these are the people who are who are experts in their field these are people who are going to talk about the things which is going to come in the future it's most welcoming when we, we when we can have some kind of a discussions with them one to one with them and i'm sure you will find you will find a lot of inputs coming from them i'm sure you will find a lot of lot of new new information getting to you which will be an a uh, uh, beneficial for you let me let me introduce my fellow panelists the power packed fellow panelists to this to this beautiful webinar we have ladies and gentlemen we have mr chandru r chandrashekhar mr chandru r chandrashekhar is an md with himsa investments and himsa investments focuses on sustainable proteins mr chandrashekhar is a management graduate from satellite business school in way back in 1996 is based in singapore and today he is taking this call from chennai so oh, namaste uh, mr chandru chandrashekhar welcome on the namaste. panel thank you sir very it's a pleasure and and i think on behalf of entire clear meat team we are very privileged to have you here likewise ladies and gentlemen we have sri hemendra mathur from fiki and hemendra ji let me tell you you are standing at a very 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 good place free from pollution joining us from a farmhouse mr mr hemendra mathur is the chairman of the task force of agri startups in fiki is an alumni of of ams ahmedabad 1996 batch is also a venture capitalist manages bharat innovation fund bharat innovation fund the focused on deep tech investments in emerging sectors is also a co-founder in agri that is think ag which is a non for profit platform to support adoption of innovation in agriculture it is a pleasure to invite introduce to all of you sri hemendra mathur hello sir good morning to everyone hemendra ji it is a it is a pleasure to have you here also Likewise. also with me is my is my fellow panelist an iitn from from mumbai the ceo of vadwani research foundation is also a bio he had done his 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 bioengineering in fact from iit bombay uh had to he was ceo of exot life sciences and headed the business development in vetro diagnostics program he has done his phd looks very young ladies and gentlemen and he has done a phd in biomems from university of florida in 2007 and he is an ms in electronic uh, engineering from 
University of Connecticut. So please welcome Dr. Abdur from Mumbai joining Thank us. You, tonight. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for joining Dr. Abdur. And we have another young gentleman who is another very talented person, a chartered accountant, a banker, that worked in, in Big Four. He is none other than Mr. Nikhil Srinivas from Bank India. Nikhil Thank Srinivas you. is also a venture capitalist. And prior to that, he has worked for D DCF Ventures, Yes Bank, Naman Network, the CA of 2014 batch. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a very, very powerful analyst team out here talking about what is the future, what the investors uh, feel about it, how are we going to go about it, how the scenario is going to change. And trust me, it's going to be a very, very absorbing next 30 to 35 minutes. Keep your questions ready. Any webinar becomes very powerful when you interact. And I assure you, I will ensure that the questions you are raising is answered in, in totality and by the person you would wish to wish to ask. Let's begin. And uh, I would request Sri Chandrasekhar Ji to please start off the today's webinar with the, with the opening remarks and your views. Uh, I'll request all my panelists to please take two to two, two to three minutes to just say something about the, the, the ecosystem that we are in as an opening remark. Good to you, Sri Chandrasekhar. Thank you very much. Um, our company, Sustin and Ahimsa, our focus is on seeking and developing sustainable protein platforms that could work at India scale and India price. So India is at once at the same time, uh, both of the probably the biggest growth opportunity as well as the one country that has also the largest challenges in this field. Because India is a young country and we have a, over a billion people who would love to eat meat if that meets their expectations in terms of taste, price, convenience, nutrition, and above all ethical principles. The unmet protein gap in India is of the order of about 20 grams per person per day that translates into about 10 billion kilos of pure protein per year for the whole country. And industrialized animal killing for food is neither going to be able to meet this challenge sustainably, nor in time to safeguard our demographic dividend, which is imperiled by protein malnutrition. So we have a huge problem on our hands, but at the same time, a huge opportunity, because although we talk about the so-called alternative proteins or smart proteins, India needs an all of the above approach and we need all the protein we can get. And I believe India would be the largest and also perhaps the first country to ever leapfrog industrialized killing, slaughter of animals, raising animals, uh, slaughtering them, dealing with the waste problems, we have a beautiful opportunity to do this kind of leapfrog that we did with mobile technology, leapfrogging landline telephony for the entire country. So in this context, we also have probably the biggest resource capability as well as the market demand. If we rise to the challenge and provide our customers, consumers with uh, non-slaughter or ahimsa meats that are suitable for people of all religions all across the country from Kashmir to Kanyakumari, from Gujarat to Arunachal Pradesh, because there's a wide variation in the taste preferences. So if we can meet the consumers where they are, I think this would be probably the biggest opportunity in the entire world. I'll stop here. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chandrasekhar. And, and, and I really like the word ahimsa. And, and uh, the way you're saying that the, the revolution can start from here. I would like to bring in Hemendraji here. Hemendraji, you are on mute. If you can unmute yourself. Hemendraji. I think Hemendraji just got lost due to some, some uh, connectivity issue. We'll get back to him. Uh, Nick, yes, Hemendraji. Are you back, Hemendraji? If I can request, you can unmute yourself. Yeah, yeah, I'm back. Sorry, I'm in a low network zone. 
no 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 uh, not no, clearly he, he, any opening remark right no uh, i think uh, uh, it's a very interesting topic the whole ecosystem around alternative proteins is developing of course it has matured a bit in some of the geographies but i i think in india it is still at a very nascent stage and uh, i have seen the whole agri tech ecosystem developing in last uh, sort of 8 or 10 years i see the same happening in alternative proteins now so uh, it's a very interesting space and uh, definitely we need more entrepreneurs like siddharth who can come forward and build something really interesting not just for india but for the globe so i'll stop here thank you and and uh, in fact uh, himendra ji i remember i had met uh, siddharth in, in dubai when i where i was there the world food expo uh, as a, as a guest and i had seen the passion that siddharth and the entire sutapa and the entire kmi team had and 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 what what nice uh, reception they received on 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 introducing their product so i i i understand that the future is very bright nikhil i would like to bring you in here and i would request uh, If you can, if you can, uh, please give us your opening statement. Thank you, Raviji, and good morning to everyone who's uh, watching us right now. Uh, so, Brink is a global venture accelerator. Uh, we based out of Hong Kong with offices across the world. So, sustainability is at the core of what we do, and alternate protein is a sector that we that we actively invest in. Uh, we believe that we are in the midst of a revolution of sorts in the alternate protein space. the meat that we consume today in future will come from a laboratory and not from a farm right we also see a change in consumer interest uh, consumers today are also looking for sources of food not only tasty food but also sources that are ethical healthy and environmental environmentally friendly right particularly the millennial and gen z consumers as well who are open to alternate sources of food that being said technology over the past decade has evolved there are there are various ways of getting uh the texture the kind of meat that people are used to that are free of hormones free of antibiotics free of any contaminants free of foodborne diseases uh have better environmental uh, or have a lower environmental impact of such there are plant based meats there are cultivated meats there is precision fermentation that works and like uh, chandrashekar ji earlier mentioned this is a space that is massive uh they have seen reports that say that uh, this could be a 2.7 trillion dollar market by 2040 or uh, about 60% of the global meat market by 2030 uh, the consulting from ATT and he says that this would come from alternative protein itself uh and india has been the has been the food plate for the world right and we could potentially do that given the talent we have in the size of the country uh for alternate sources of protein as well and this is a space that i think this just got started with massive scope to uh this thing and pro- potentially revolutionize the way we consume food uh going forward right so well, thank you so much and and i really appreciate the market size that you are you are talking about i think that market size is 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 i think a lot of companies will get very bullish and and the fact is we are we are moving towards towards an era where 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 we have to adopt uh, the culture of, of stopping killings and all and and going into more of a of an innovation i'll come back to you on that but uh, Mr. Abdur, uh, would like you to come and and say um, a few words as your opening remarks. You're on mute. You're on mute. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Ali. Um, so just briefly, I'm part of uh, Wadwani Research Center at IIT Bombay, as uh, you all know. Uh, many of the most important technologies or impactful technologies today in the world, be it uh, genetic engineering, therapeutics, vaccines, antibody. um and so on all originated from academia and that's where we are at iit bombay uh, we begin working with professors at the idea stage concept stage we've been since 2014 investing in projects and we are one of the very very few centers that is actually funded government is the biggest funder uh, through dbt byrac and other programs um outside of the government there are very few funders big funders for uh, technology development research uh and wadmani foundation is one such and um we operate in the area of bioengineering therapeutics medical technology synthetic biology biotherapeutics and so on and um uh, you know till date we have funded more than 80 projects um out of which about eight startups have come out and uh, there are many more in the pipeline so my view today on the panel is going to be we have some very eminent uh vcs representing um and the funding equation has two sides 
One is the funder and the other side is the utilization of fund. Um, I want to say a few things about um, how the public infrastructure in India can, um, can, um, can, can help better utilize funds that are available to startups. Yeah, that'll be it. Thank you, Abdur. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So, primarily, we've got we've got some 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 uh, initial initial information that, that all of you have shared. And and again, to the audience, I would like to say one thing: keep your questions up. It's the time when you can really ask the question, and we'll ensure we'll try and give you the answer as much as possible. Right, Dr. Chandrasekhar. Uh, begin with, I would like to ask a question that. Uh, what is the current level of global investors' interest in the cultivated meat industry? And there is plenty of involved. How was it involved over the time? If yes. you can tell us, tell us something about it. The key moment, I think, was a few years back uh, when not the cultured meat, but the so-called meat analog uh, companies uh, got a lot of traction from Silicon Valley. It's very much like the iPhone moment uh, back into 2007, when it completely changed that com you're putting a powerful com uh, computing platform on the palm of your hand. And we have begun using it in ways that we never imagined that would happen, but it helped the whole industry take off in a big way. And a similar thing happened with investments going into the likes of Impossible Foods and Beyond Meat and other companies. And from then on, I think there has been, in fact, uh, Eat Just, uh, Josh Tetrick, who was speaking earlier today, uh, his company then uh, decided to get into uh, cellular agriculture and cultured meat. And from then on, there has been uh, parallel developments in many countries, starting from the United States, of course, Singapore being the first to give regulatory approval, the Netherlands, of course, being the pioneer with Professor Mark Post. Incidentally, a lot of doctors have been involved in this because coming from a region to medicine background, stem cell background, and it is just a natural progression to say if we can make it in small quantities for therapeutic uses, perhaps we should really do it at large scale for food use. And this has been an important consideration, even in India, where the in meat consumption is very low. We are about six kilos per person per year, whereas even China, our direct competitor in many ways, is at 66 kilos per person per year. And in other Western countries, it's about 100 kilos per person per year, and they have 500 meat-based meals every year. But in India, but even Shaker, I just wanted to say, uh, uh, coming on to this statistics, can you also tell about the other Asian country statistics, if you know, if I may ask, because if you said we are 6 to 66 or maybe 6 to 100, because then also that means this will also reflect on the on the market size that's going to increase? Absolutely. Absolutely. In fact, the other Asian countries do not have as much meat. For example, the, the next biggest country is Indonesia. Again, where they do have uh, protein malnutrition on a, a scale that is not a lot different from India's. Meat consumption generally, apart from Hong Kong, Singapore, and China, rest of Asia, there's not enough meat to go around. In fact, uh, Indonesia import quite a lot of meat and live cattle from Australia for their domestic consumption. And of course, we know about Bangladesh, Pakistan, about Sri Lanka. The situation is not very encouraging. Whereas in India, we do have plenty of cattle, but we also export a lot of meat. We are probably the second or third largest meat exporter, depending upon the year. And that's primarily because our animal welfare standards and our uh, problems related to keeping the animals alive. In fact, even with milk production, we are the largest milk producer, but the limiting factor, the critical step is water availability. That, in fact, restricts the milk yield in India. So we have huge amount of problems, but also this is a huge amount of opportunity that if people across the country are receptive to this idea of non-harm, non-slaughter, ahimsa kind of meat. And any person of any religion can have any meat. For example, Hindus can eat beef, Muslims can eat pork. That's a different issue altogether, but it shows the tremendous size of the market. We have to scale 10 times our current meat consumption uh, just to meet world average. World average around 40 to 50 kilos per person per year. But again, it's just an average. It's not a reflection of the distribution of the range. And of course, the other big opportunity is in Africa. The continent of Africa, meat consumption is quite low. In fact, uh, I'll come back to you on that. But uh, Mr. Chandrasekhar, thank you for giving us the averages, the statistics. And, and what I see is, is the scope of growing is about 
seven x, and I think I think uh, there will be there will be um, more more statistics and more research coming into this this. Uh, Mathur sir, I I taking off from what uh, Mr. Chandrasekhar said, I just wanted to understand from you because you are also a investor and you also see you must be discussing with with lot many others. Which regions or countries are seeing the most investment in the cultivated meat industry? Now I'm being very specific, and what factors uh, are driving this this investment? Let's let's be a bit specific because now this is a very growing market. What what Mr. Chandrasekhar said. So the total investment in alternative protein is about three billion dollars last year. It was five billion dollars about uh, a year back, and I would say seventy eighty percent of that money is going into few countries. Uh, one is USA, and second is Israel. I think these are the top leading countries in terms of investments. And uh, I think India has to catch up. Uh, very frankly, the interesting part is that uh, out of three uh, billion dollar, which in, got invested in all proteins. Uh, roughly eight ninety six million dollar came to cultured meat, huh? so almost one third uh, of the money which is going into all protein is uh, is in cultured meat, which is very significant. I and I hope that share would go up uh, further. I think there are a few other things which we should keep in mind from an investor perspective. I think it ticks many boxes, especially ESG. You know, because this this is one segment which ticks almost all the boxes on ESG parameters as and as more and more investors are becoming esg compliant i think this will become a very very important sector i think the two things that we need to change in india is uh, one how to make alternative protein mainstream protein you know we are a protein deficient country so the market has to grow multiple times and second i think we should not think from a india perspective we should rather think from a global perspective can we be the food factory in this category for the world Because the biggest challenge in this category is is the cost, and we need to bring that cost down. So, can we make these products more affordable? I think that is going to be very important. So, I'll I'll stop here. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much, <laughs> Nikhil. Uh, coming to you, Nikhil, from your from your banking and from your from your finance background. Uh, King from who from what? Uh, Himanji said, "I want you to come in here and tell us what types of investors. Now, now I'm segmenting it. What types of mm -hmm. investors are most actively investing, for example, in the cultivated meat meat industry sector, and 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 how do they um, how do their investment strategies differ? Means, I uh, firstly I want to understand what types of investors are coming and, and how are they different? What are the strategies? Because as as Mr. Chandrasekhar said, there is a Scope of about seven x. We are already lacking, and then there will be a further growth in that. Give us some light on that. All right. So, if you look at the cultivated meat space specifically alone, right? Uh, there's data from GFI that says investments in the sector between 2015 to 2020 grew about 15 to 16 x within five years. That's a massive inflow of capital that's come into the space. I'm pretty sure that post 2020 also. I don't have the numbers with me right now, but that trend has kind of continued, right? a uh, couple of reasons why investors i believe have been coming into this space one there's a potential significant market disruption you the market size is there there is scope for the market to expand uh, <clears throat> all that exists right plus technology has evolved uh, at a very quick pace uh, today you have you have startups that are developing uh, plant based protein which probably wasn't a source that was available uh, in 2014 15 at that point in time uh, there's increasing consumer demand right the kind of and there are also specialized funds like lever vc for example looking to invest specific only in uh, alternate forms of protein there are family offices that have come now if you look at the sources of capital right from angel investors who might want to make some sort of a early take a early bet on early stage companies to family offices wanting to put in capital to support a specific cause uh, to specialized vcs that are there to invest in a specific sector Of alternate protein like ahimsa VC themselves, who are there looking at ahimsa wheat meat as uh, Chandra Shekhar ji mentioned earlier. So investors have come into this space, right? Uh, and one second, I just saw on the chat there's a question: Why do investors not see India as a potential market uh, for yes. investment in the domain yes. as well, right? So investors have come into the sector. Now coming to India specifically, I think it's a space that's just beginning up. Uh, we've seen innovation begin to happen over here. There is also uh, there is also that. 
there's a massive uh, growth opportunity and growth capability that's there in India. So it's obviously going to become in interesting for investors going forward. But also, I think it's a function of the infrastructure that's available. Also, the market, people need to, there needs to be consumer acceptance in India, right? The idea of plant-based meat. And I remember, I'll quote, give you an example. I ordered a plant-based keema from Good Dot of Swiggy once. And the package comes on. And I am come from a vegetarian family, right? I have, uh, I keep experimenting with food. And my mom looks at it like, meat plant based please so that customer acceptance is something that needs to come in right and once that comes in uh, with obviously startups solving for taste texture and affordability uh, and customer acceptance coming in gradually as uh, the younger population starts looking at alternative sources of meat and alternative protein if not uh, if we could use the term alternate protein if not meat per se I think that's one thing that could uh, kind of drive investments into the India uh, market as well. I'll come back to you on the investment size. And uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, keep sending us questions. I will take it and I'll ask all my panelists. I'll take up the questions. And uh, while we are discussing, we will, we will, we will not be answering uh, uh, questions. But yes, these questions are with us. Once the panelist has completed his, his viewpoint, I will take up the questions. Uh, Abdurji, my question to you is like, uh, when I asked Nikhil, I was I was more specific on what types of investors and what are the investment strategies. You is, uh, what are the key challenges that investors face? You know, while we are saying they are very bullish, but there must be some challenges. So what are the challenges that investors face when investing in cultivating meat industry? And, and why everything is very good. Let's also see at the challenges and I want you to talk about these challenges. I think one is regulatory challenges. Uh, I think regulations has to become more compliant, in my opinion. Uh, regulations are also evolving, uh, and I think a lot of entrepreneurs are working with the government. Uh, that's one challenge. And second, as I mentioned, you know, it's still seen as a niche product. You know, we need to make it mainstream to really become affordable to large section of consuming population. And third, some bit of education among consumers that it's good, it's, you know, and what has gone into making it. Uh, so that there's a comfort on the consumer side. We need to build the ecosystem among retailers, industry guys, startups, government, food testing laboratories, research institutions. I think everything has to come together uh, for, for, this to, for this to become more interesting for investors. It's already interesting, but it can become more interesting. Thank you, Hemanji. Thank you so much. Uh, coming to, uh, coming to uh, Shri Shekharji, my, my question is... Uh, Tell me something, how do the investors evaluate the potential profitability and scalability of cultivated meat companies? And what matrix do they typically use? Tell us about that because, because that can give us an idea. Shekharji. As with any industry, investors are looking at the risks and how fast the products can be scaled. So scalability and the inherent risk, both the political, technical, environmental, ethical risks are a big factor. Right now, the risks are too huge because a long path for commercialization. Even Singapore, there's only one company selling one product and that's about it. So in India, with the multiplicity of uh, uh, factors, uh, the and this is common the, uh, world over, is scale. Even the meat analog sector, there's only one company that can make whole biomass fermented products to make meat analogs at scale, which nobody else has even managed to reach even within uh, short distance. So it's a huge gap between doing something in the laboratory and being able to make it commercially as a demonstrator and then being able to scale according to market demand. So fermentation bioreactor capacity is probably the biggest constraint. And if people could address that and say, here, we have, first of all, the feed costs, the nutrient costs, the growth factor costs, the bioreactor costs. If we can bring it on parity to current biotech fermentation in pharmaceuticals or even brewery, then we have a winning combination which says we can use this infrastructure to take these cells and make real meat products that can compete on price parity with conventional meat. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Mr. Chandrasekhar. Thank you, Nikhil. Uh, just wanted to understand from you what are the key trends and developments in the global investor landscape for the cultivated meat industry. If you can throw us some light, and how uh, likely it's, it's to shape up in the industry in the coming years. Uh, could you 
help me answer. Do you want me to repeat the question? Yeah, yeah. I was just wanting to understand uh, some of the key trends and developments in the global investors landscape for the cultivated meat industry. The key trends, key trends and development. That's, that's one part. And 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 gradually, how is it going to take shape in this industry in the coming years? I think uh, the next couple of years, at least next five to ten years or so, uh, we look to see cultivated meat probably hit uh, some sort of price parity with animal grown meat. Uh, investors are looking, or I see investors being a little bullish in terms of uh, plant-based foods are address addressing specific white space areas, uh, clean label, healthy alternatives, cellular agriculture, uh, fermentation-based protein, uh, some upstream technologies. Uh, Innovations on the supply chain itself as also for the sector. Uh, probably, you know, precision fermentation. And if you're able to do this at scale and bring down the price point for customers, I think that's something that will drive adoption. Uh, and that really will also open up the market for larger funds to come in, institutional, larger institutional capital to come in and take bigger bets. Like uh, Chandrasekhar ji mentioned, the risks today are massive, right? Are you India also doesn't speak specifically about uh, cultivated meat in any of its food safety regulations, right? Or you don't, it's, I wouldn't say it's, it's a gray space in the regulations. You're not clear what can you do, what can you not do. Uh, as the policymakers kind of start focusing on this as that evolves, I think more capital, capital exists. It's a, capital is there to invest in this space, but it's just being patient at this point in time is what I would say, right? As the sector evolves and we're seeing, we're seeing companies come in and as an accelerator ourselves, because we take early stage, we make investments in the seed and pre-seed uh, stages, right? You make early Nikhil, stages. Nikhil, right? uh, sorry to interrupt. You were saying family yeah. offices are also now showing interest. Correct. Which, which means India is opening up that from the traditional, that it is. Uh, that it is. not investing because I also manage the solar fund with many family offices and I've seen they're very particular not to invest in tobacco, alcohol, liquors, meat, because those are the family offices because we, we ourselves have in solar about more than 1,000 crores of solar funds. So they're very apprehensive. So when you said about family offices getting getting interested in this, which means India is opening up. See India this market. So, and also I think the reason family offices are investing is because they want to make investments in line with some of their personal beliefs and in sectors they want to create an impact in, right? Now I remember back in 2017-18, I was speaking with a bunch of investors who were very clear. We will not invest in anything that has to do with, that has to do with harming animals, right? And today, there are more family offices saying, okay, is, is there something, let's say, again, a recent example right now, I was speaking to a family office that wanted to look at uh, lab-grown cotton itself, right? Are there ethical sources of this? So not just meat, in other places also, people are looking at making investments in areas which have a better uh, or a lower environmental impact, uh, are more ethical per se, and are in line with their uh, personal beliefs as well. So early stage investors have come in. Uh, there are VCs that are operating and as the market uh, evolves, as we see policy and regulations improve, as we reduce some of the risks uh, that Chandrasekhar ji also mentioned, there will be more capital that comes into this space because the market is there for the taking. Absolutely. Absolutely. Abdurji, uh, we, we had lost you in between. Are you there? Can you, can you hear us? Abdurji? Technology has its uh, issues. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I think uh, I am ready to take some questions if you have, because uh, uh, the time says that we are we are uh, running out uh, of and, and 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 we can take some some uh, questions on this. I think uh, uh, Mr. Chandrasekhar is already responding on the government's response. Uh, Mr. Chandrasekhar, if you can actually speak on that, that will be that will be. Sure, I think in the, over the last five years or even seven years, there's been tremendous amount of investment in basic research in the government institutions like uh, cell of uh, CCMB and uh, other bio research institutions from DBT, from BIRAC, and uh, forums such as yourself. But the key uh, factor would be bridging the gap between basic research and pilot scale. Uh, Abdur is back, if in case you want to ask him a question. Yes, please, please, please carry on. Uh, yes, so there is a lot of interest and there is a lot of investment coming in, but clearly we have to have 
an integrated holistic approach which says the government is aware of this and these would be the regulatory pathways going forward and the VC and the venture community and the startup ecosystem is ready to come out with a viable product that actually the consumers can get a bite off and then that would be the key factor consumer acceptance. And we also have to do work in parallel to inform the public and be transparent about what this means and contrast it with the conventional meat industry, where there's a lot of issues with animal welfare, slaughter, and the waste management issues as well. So there's a lot of work to do. We have to start. Thank you. And, and Abdurji, I would like you to give us the closing remark because we had lost you in between, especially the role of role of uh, investors coming in. We missed you. We wanted to act because you're doing research on that. And also the government's role because Nikhil actually has opened our eyes with, 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 the, with the amount of family offices coming in. Chandrasekhar ji spoke about the about the, the consumer demand and, and just the closing remark because we've got hardly two to three minutes left and I want to give that entire time to you to please tell about that, that perspective. We cannot hear you, Abdurji. Hello, can you hear me now? Yes, yes, please go ahead. Okay, sorry, I don't, you know, technology troubles. So just briefly, sir, I mean, um, you know, if you look at the funding um, in the U.S. for for the Canadian dollars, right? So I think funding is a huge gap. Um, like I said earlier, we're trying to bridge that gap through private funding. Um, in the U.S., for every dollar that the government puts in for this kind of work, private philanthropies, not return on investment funding, philanthropic funding is almost matching the government's contribution. I think there is a huge gap in the Indian ecosystem where uh, the philanthropic funding for these kind of efforts has to come in. And our center uh, does a lot of the work in terms of raising philanthropic funding because a lot of this ecosystem building, country building has to go in. Um, so that the foundation has to be laid for innovators of tomorrow and, and, the, and for the VC and the investment community to be able to find a lot of uh, late stage, well-developed and well-grounded technologies for them to invest in. So those are my final words there. Thank you so much, uh, my fellow panelists. And with this, uh, we come to the end of uh, this session of uh, investors' perspective on uh, the meat industry cultivated meat industry. Thank you very much uh, to the audience for listening to us and uh, giving us your questions. Thank you, Mr. Chandrasekhar. Thank you, Nikhil. Thank you, thank you Abdurji. And, 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 and I think thank you also to uh, uh, Himanji. We lost him. He's, he's outside. Thank you so much. It was nice hosting all of you. And we look forward for more such discussion, more such awareness programs, wherein we will we, we, come to a, to a more... Um, uh, Innovative, innovative awareness that, that is coming into India, into the food processing. Can I just add so one much. point to say that yes. if any country should do it and can do it in alternative meat and especially cultured meat, that is clean meat, ahimsa meat, it should be India and India can do it and we should do all it takes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Namaste and, and we Thank look you. forward to more such interaction. Thank you.